So it's been really common lately to use the Lynx distributor for all of your DC loads. And then you do a small jumper wire and connect to your shutoff. And then from there you go to whatever else you need to go to. Uh, usually a fuse and your battery positive. Then here, sometimes there's a small jumper wire and you go to your shunt and then to your uh, battery negative. And then of course all of your other DC loads come out of here and additional Lynx distributors. Now this is, the, I do want to stress, this is in place of using an actual Lynx BMS or uh, other Lynx shunt. Uh, and then you could have the inputs on the other side. But this is, we're doing this probably 75, 80% of the time. We're building one of these now. And it's just a nice little device. And again, one of the things that we like to do is add this uh, special cable that uh, we've talked about before. It takes 12 volts in, run it, runs it through a little uh, step-down converter that's buried in here in the heat shrink, and then puts it out to five volts to two pins here. And this makes all the lights and the on the Lynx distributor work the way they're take these covers off one of the reasons I started doing this was because we needed a way to cover up this the hot here so uh, I always recommend using at least a nice uh, big shutoff like this this is capable of I want to say at least 300 amps continuous but the size of these bolts are too big for the hole here. Same with, oh, I'll pick, I'll find that. Same with this, that's not gonna work there. So for both of these, we have to drill them out. If you have a workbench, you don't mind putting a couple holes in, I'd recommend just drilling it right into the table. It's not going anywhere. So then you take a uh, drill bit. Uh, let's see what size am I using here. Looks like this is a 27 64th drill bit. Uh, that's been working pretty good for me. And uh, just go at this with uh, a decent amount of pressure. It'll produce bigger chips and should be good to go. I'm going to put a little bit of cutting, some little bit of cutting fluid on it. go then take a file and file off the burrs that's really critical you may take off a little bit of the the uh, tinned coating on there but you could probably use a deburring tool but I just don't have one on hand So on this one, the the top connection is most important, and then on the shunt, the bottom connection is most important, and both of these are smooth. Now we can take it off the table. This table's beat up enough, it doesn't bother me. Well, you know what, let's start with uh, this guy right here. We will be using a mix of standard and metric so have have a socket set with you that'll do both looks like we got nine sixteenths on this oh, man, I'm just gonna loosen both sides up and this doesn't use a washer or a lock nut because it has the serrated edges on there so we just put that in there
make sure that's good and tight. Then uh, make sure on the Victron Smart Shunt that this is two battery minus, or rather two system minus. And you can orientate this a couple of different ways. You can do it this way, uh, but it's tough to get the data cables through there. So a lot of times we'll do it this way. And a lot of times we've only got room for the lock washer and uh, yeah, the lock washer, not the old washer to really make, because this is such a bigger piece of metal here now. That one's at least 17, 18 millimeters. Let's see where we're at. We're doing this live. It's an install day. I figured I'd show this. Then uh, from here, look at this. This slides right back on. Plug uh, this guy in on the input side. And then uh, red right to the positive one here. Black to the negative. 13 millimeter for pretty much all the Victron stuff. I usually end up landing all my positives to one of these and it ends up being this one most times. So get some of these out and find a pliers like this works real good actually that I don't have to worry about a whole lot usually we do the main ground on one of the lines so this is basically just component ground for this little thing or whatever else I need to ground like the servo GX things like that Oh, you know what? Yeah, and then usually we would run the positive line for the shunt here, also in here, but usually we run that in a cable tray that's down here. So for the time being, I'm not going to include that in there, but I would put that right there as well. Just so you know, I'm not forgetting about it. And it can be a little tricky to get all this in there and all the lights still visible, but it is doable. I think I just did it. There you go. This is the device that Victron should make. I don't know what I'd call it, but it's an all-in-one unit that has disconnect, your shunt, uh, the fuses, and the lights ready to go. Tell me what you think.